Hello, gentle marketers. Welcome to episode 66 of the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, the show where we talk about marketing your business by disrupting the current marketing paradigm and changing it to a gentler approach, one that's based on empathy and kindness. I'm Sarah Zinekroch, I'm the host here, and you know that you're in the right place if you are a heart-centered entrepreneur or change maker who is looking for a different, a better way to market your business. Or you might also be a marketing impact pioneer, so that's someone who's working in a business, in an organization, who really sees that they're is a better way to market than maybe what you're currently doing, what your business is currently doing. So real quick, before we begin, a gentle plug for the next Gentle Business Circle that is coming up on January 14th. If you've been listening for a while and love what you hear, you might also consider joining the Gentle Business Circle. It's a safe zone to hang out with other gentle marketers and help each other build our business and grow our impact with integrity and kindness. So the circle happens once per month in a live Zoom call where you get to ask gentle marketing questions and we discuss just any kind of topics related to business and marketing the gentle way. And obviously, if you can't join um, the live calls, you can submit your questions in advance. The calls take place once per month, as I said, every second Wednesday of the month. And the next one is coming up on Wednesday, January 13th. There are about 20 plus gentle marketers signed up for 2021. And I'm just so excited to see this group that's been going for over a year. And now really, it's like we planted the seed and now the the plant starts growing. And it's just I'm delighted. So if you think of joining us, there are different levels of support starting out at $7 per month. It's based on a pay what feels good model. So depending on your current income budget, just choose the the level that feels good. You can find out more at sarahsinacroche.com forward slash circle. Okay, back to today. I'm recording this on December 21st, a big, 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 big day according to astrology. I am not an astrologer. I'm just a follower. But Here's how I understand this really special day. So astrologers that I'm following have been talking about this day for years, not years, but at least over a year now. And so December 21st is the day where Saturn and Jupiter conjunct. So they come together. And and it's interesting because I've really observed this not so much here in, in Lausanne, Switzerland, because there's it's often too much light or we're kind of, you know, we're out, outside of the city, but we're next to a city. But whenever I'm in Sicily, my happy place, which this year was only once. And and as I said, as I realized my happy place, I, I mean, I'm mostly happy here as well. But it's just, you know, extra, extra happy to be in, in Sicily. And, and over in Sicily, there's like only just probably two years ago, they actually put in street lamps into the street that leads up to our, our place. And, and so it really is like, much, much darker, because there is, you know, we're not next to a big city. And there's really little lighting, like there's no city lights. And so you can really see the stars. And so over this past months, you've seen up in the sky, you know, these two stars that keep getting closer and closer together. And so that's what's happening today. Apparently, Saturn and Jupiter are coming together. Uh, That's the conjunction. So what I have learned from astrologers, and again, I might be you know, misquoting some of these things. So, so look it up yourself. But what I what I've learned is that we're moving out of Capricorn, so out of this Capricorn sign that is an Earth sign, into Aquarius, which is an air sign. So 
very, very different energy, you know, Capricorn, I'm a Capricorn, this kind of, you know, down to earth, very pragmatic, very kind of structured. And so what all these astrologers are talking about is, is that we're leaving behind these old ways of, of being of, you know, government structures, organizational structures, and Aquarius, if you remember hair in the musical, the air, the age of Aquarius, it's really going towards that, going towards more uh, freedom and uh, innovation and human terrorism and in independence. So that's what Aquarius brings us. And so astrologers are saying that we're moving or we're beginning a new 800 year cycle. Again, I'm not exactly sure why 800 years. I think they are also talking about 20 years for for Saturn and Jupiter, but but just know that we're moving from Earth to air and Jupiter is the is the planet that stands for optimism, growth, expansion, where Saturn is all about responsibility. So it's interesting to have the two together because it's it's not just all Jupiter is kind of like oh I'm so lucky and I'm you know feeling expansive where Saturn is like yeah that's great but let's actually materialize all this these new uh, things this innovation and so really building also the foundations to to make this a new way of being so that's kind of what will set the tone for at least the next 20 years. So I really, really think this is a big deal. We're moving to higher things. So yeah, I'm just really excited um, for all of us in terms of our personal lives. And, and so what I'm wanting to do in this uh, solo episode is kind of talk about the trends and, and tendencies that I think will move towards in terms of business. So starting 2021, but also kind of more long term. So before we do that, let's let's just take also a look back and, and kind of wrap up 2020. So that's one of the exercises I we did on the last call, the December call for the gentle business circle. Like on one hand, yes, we want to you know look forward to the new year but that also means like let's let's wrap up 2020 and so I can share from my perspective and 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 just invite you to look at it also from your perspective and say well what what was this year teaching me it wasn't all bad obviously if we only look outside it didn't look positive at all right there was a lot of pain there was just very heavy energy and darkness. And, and some of that got reflected on our own lives. Like we had to deal, you know, with losses. I think so many people had to deal with losses, not necessarily only human losses, but but losses on very different levels. Like for me, it was mainly the LinkedIn kind of business that I had built. I just didn't have the energy to put that out there anymore and uh, and so the the LinkedIn trainings for example they basically went down to zero because companies didn't prioritize training anymore so that just kind of yeah evaporated and uh, and for my husband he also you know kind of worked from home and it was kind of like all this also this loss of structure like just like the old way of being. I get up in the morning and I go to work and I come home at night. So so that was completely lost. He's still in home office. And, and so it was like this transition to say, oh, okay, so this old version of me is now gone. And and now I need to evolve in, into a different version. And, and who knows, maybe, you know, companies will say as of the spring 2021, okay, everybody comes back, but maybe not. Maybe there will be a transition into more working from home. And, and I actually think there will be more working from home. So so dealing also with the loss of, of structure, like many of us had to deal with that. So, 
so many losses on, on different levels. But besides the losses, I think it's also interesting to look at the wins. Like, where, what did I learn from this year? What was actually positive for me in this year? And, and so f for me, I put down patience, like really learning to be patient and to kind of accept universal timing I've shared on several podcasts, other people's podcasts, that to me, this was really like the definition of liminal space this year. It's like, I, you know, I'm, I was ready with the book. And yet I knew, intuitively knew that there were, it was just not time yet to put this book out in the middle of this crisis. And, uh, and so having to sit with that and, and just be patient and, and really just, you know, in terms of the business going down to like, you know, minimal income and, and having to accept that and be patient with it and say, yeah, now is not the time. I'm not going to push it out and, you know, push another gentle marketing program out just to get some money in. So dealing with that patience was really, really my key learning of, of this year. And also, you know, we had the chance to spend much more time with the people, the close people in our lives. And I really realized, well, that's what matters to me. Yes, I want to serve, you know, a bigger collective community, but in the end, it needs to fit into my personal life as well. And so how can I bring this forward, you know, with this new business idea, how do I serve but not over serve and make sure that in the end, what matters to me most is to be able to spend time with my family and also with myself. So, you know, the, the, the new routines that I build, the yoga practice every day, the, the walking that I've already been doing for a while now, but, but those things, they take time and the old world wouldn't allow for this time. People always said, oh, wow, you're walking every day. How, how do you find time? Well, you need to make time. So just realizing these priorities and, and what matters to us. So I think this, this year really gave us this time to sit with those things. And, and this liminal space is never comfortable. I mean, for me, I, <laughs> I, had days where I was like, what am I doing with myself? What am I going to do? And so a lot of knitting projects happened and yeah, other, other projects that were fun. But at the same time, my kind of type A personality was like, you're not doing enough. But at the same time, still sitting with that and going, I know I'm, I'm not doing, but that's what I'm learning right now. So yeah, so maybe that kind of inspires you to think about your 2020 and think about, you know, what, what you learned from this special year. So then talking about trends and tendencies that I see for the world of business for 2021, I really think that we're heading towards more collaborations so this P of partnership of the gentle marketing mandala will take a much bigger role. I see this really happening everywhere. People are much more open than to collaborations than they ever were before. And this always starts with the people. A lot of times, kind of the old paradigm would say, yeah, but, you know, the governments or the, 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 the or big corporations should also do that, of course. But at the same time, if we're not leading the way, it's harder for them to to see what's really happening. So I think it's also for us to to start and and implement these partnerships much more into our our way of living and our way of doing business. This whole idea about human connections. So let's bring the human connections back to marketing. Let's bring the human connections back to how we do business. Let's create space. Let's hold space for humanity and 
conversations and even difficult conversations. We had an interesting chat at our dinner table about religions, actually, because my, my son, Simon, who's 17, turning 18, he identifies as an atheist. And so it's it was interesting to talk about that. And, and then my husband said, well, I think your mom is actually kind of a humanitarian. So there's not really a specific religion, but she just believes in people. And it was interesting to, yeah, to hear that. And I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say that's that's correct or, or not correct. But it's true that I think uh, going forward, it is really about believing in ourselves more that will change the society. And that requires that deep inner work. And whether, you know, that involves also a religion or not doesn't matter. But as long as we do this inner work and trust ourselves, we're also then more open to trust other people. And so this whole, you know, I'm right, you're wrong doesn't happen as often anymore because we just trust ourselves and we believe in ourselves. And so, yeah, that, that idea of humanitarianism or human connections, I think that's going to be the way we do everything going forward. I already mentioned more people movements. So really, gentle marketing has to start with the people. I think climate crisis has to be first adopted by uh, the people. I led a, a um, workshop on one of uh, the groups that I'm a participant in about the 17 sustainable development goals. I've talked about those here in the podcast before. And it was interesting how quite a few people we're like, well, it's all nice to have these goals, but they're, you know, they're set forth by by countries, by you know, big institutions. They don't really apply to us people, and I understand that that's how it's perceived, and we kind of feel helpless. But the idea is how is to figure out well, how do these seventeen sustainable development goals? apply to us? How can we fit them into our daily life? So it's not uh, that they are not compatible. We just have to figure out, well, on a small level, how do we implement these into our daily lives and even into uh, the way we do business? So I I really think it's about the people who are going to make the change. And, And unfortunately, it's oftentimes right now, since we're still in the old paradigm, it, the people are are not understanding the way you know these institutions are like oh this is the way it is and that's the goals and implement them and so as the people who then have to say well that's nice but here's how it works for us as as individuals so there's the that idea of the people movements at the same time it's actually also I think going forward, going to be less about individualisms. So it's not about me and my wealth and my, you know, my legacy or or such goals that were kind of the standard until now. It's going to be about the collective and how do we make a change together and how uh, can we have win, win, win. So win for ourselves, win for the other person involved and win for the planet. So it's really about all of that. That means also more activism. So, you know, more standing up for these 17 sustainable development goals, for example. So more Greta's of the of this world and, and more people saying enough is enough. It's time to change. Also, Aquarius, I think, stands for more innovation. And so that means also using technology in that way. So innovation using, you know, what we have available, and maybe that involves AI, for example, but in a good way, in a way that creates, you know, results for the collective, 
so also, yeah, this focus on what matters most to us. So this year has really given us given us the, the time to think about what matters to us. And, and it's for, I would bet for most people, it's not been the money and the money is not the most important thing. And so going forward, I think people will bring that into, you know, their business much more. Yes, money matters. Yes, we want to create a sustainable business, but it needs to be a win, win, win. So it's going to be, since we're moving out of Capricorn, it's going to be about, you know, a different way to measure our success, maybe. So is it not going to be only about money, but is it going to be about way of life, joy, kindness, all of these kind of intangible things? And and in the end, yeah, I, I really do hope that it's also moving towards more kindness and in a more gentle way to approach everything, but including our business and our marketing. So that's kind of how I, yes, hope, but I also really do see signs everywhere. And, and I'm uplifted by the idea that astrology seems to help us moving towards that. So, of course, it's not going to be all butterflies and sunshine immediately. Remember, this is an 800 year cycle. So we still have to deal with COVID and all the pain related to that. But it seems like there's now a light at the end of the tunnel. So there's really hope. And I'm super excited for this new era and what it feels like it's what a lot of us have been waiting for all our life. So if, if you ever had this calling that you're like, oh, I don't know, it feels like that's what I've been brought here to do. I just don't know and if it's going to work. I think now is the time to really put a, a plan of action into place and, and, and just go with it. So that's what I have for you. And, and again, if, if you would like to belong to a gentle group of individuals who kind of travel together on this journey, I, I would love to have these conversations with you in the gentle business circle. And you can find out all the details at sarasnacroce.com forward slash circle. Let's be the change we want to see in the world. And if you're listening to this at the end of December 2020, happy holidays. I look forward to another year on the Gentle Business Revolution podcast with you. Take good care.